Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're so glad you could join us for our webinar where we discuss our one year master program in water and sustainable development. If you're watching from YouTube or uh, Facebook, then and you're logged in, then you have the opportunity to ask questions using the chat. So please uh, use that if you have any questions uh, about our program. But uh, before you do that, please do introduce yourself and let us know where you're from, because we always like to know who is watching and uh, from around the world. Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Laura Kwak, and I work in the communication office of IHE Delft, and I will be your webinar host today. My colleague, Ewout Kok, he's also from the communication office. He's making sure that everything runs smoothly behind the scenes. He will be checking the chat and making sure that uh, the most relevant and frequently asked questions are covered by our panel um, for us to cover later on. But feel free to already ask a question when it pops up and we will gather them. So uh, helping me open this webinar is uh, Charlotte. She is Professor of Hydraulic Engineering for Land and Water Development. But most importantly, in this case, she is the Vice Rector Academic and Student Affairs. So welcome, Charlotte, to this Thank webinar. You. Glad, glad you could be here. Um, yeah, I thought we would just kick it off with a conversation about uh, studying at IHE and what that's like. So um, maybe could you mention a couple of top reasons why someone would want to study at IHE? Well, I can, of course, I can uh, well count a, a few, uh, quite a number, but, but I think a, a really important one is, is uh, if you're really passionate about water and if you're passionate about uh, contributing to water and sustainable development, I think uh, IG Delft is, is a really nice place to start because I think there, there you gather uh, um, people with some similar uh, passions and ambi ambitions, career ambitions. The other thing that is really, really nice at IG uh, Delft is, is the number of international uh, students that are coming here. It's, it's really a very international um, uh, environment. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you, if you are in a classroom, uh, it's, well, it's, it's easy to have like uh, all classmates of, of, of different countries and, and I, what, what I'm, the countries mostly uh, Africa, Asia, Latin America. So it's really international. You learn from each other. Uh, you build a great network um, and, and you inspire each other. So, so it's, it's a really international uh, environment, which, which I really, they, from day to day, I still appreciate that. Yeah, me too. Me too. And um, besides it being super international, I think it's also a, a multidisciplinary environment because mm -hmm. we have sort of water subjects, uh, a broad spectrum of them being taught at IHE. Could you maybe uh, talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I, I, indeed. I mean, we have uh, near all disciplines uh, related to water uh, under one roof here. And uh, of course, I mean, water challenges and water problems are, are never uh, single disciplinary. I mean, there's always uh, for, for tackling uh, complex water issues, you always need to draw upon uh, different uh, disciplines like multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary. And, and in our uh, education, we, we really pay attention to the multidisciplinarity so you can you know uh, because there's so many disciplines in the in the building you can really learn from other disciplines uh, working at the same problem the same water issues but also interdisciplinarity so that people uh, from dis different disciplines are working together uh, tackling uh, a, a certain uh, water water uh, related challenge yeah so, so almost Go ahead. <laughs> so, so it's so it's indeed uh, uh, in the classroom, but but of course also in uh, in in uh, when you're walking through the cor corridors and, and and doing projects and assignments, you will meet a lot of people from different disciplines. Okay, um, and something of uh, something else that our students have in common, I think, or maybe not all of them, but a lot of our students, they're mid-career professionals. Can you explain what that uh, does in terms of uh, being educated together? 
Well, you know, you, of course, you can learn from each other, and you can learn about other other uh, uh, experiences. And uh, so, so for example, if you're learning about a certain theory, you can immediately apply it. You can immediately relate to that, and and also other people uh, can relate to that. So, so if you, if you're doing group work and and everybody comes with a, uh, some experience uh, that they can share, I think that really enriches the the education and the learning. At IHE, and um, apart from just the students at IHE, we also have uh, quite a number of uh, great lecturing colleagues. Um, could you maybe talk about them a little bit? Yeah, yeah, we have uh, actually quite. Uh, we are proud of our staff. We have quite uh, uh, good people. Um, in, in the, there are people who are actually quite well known in, in their field. Uh, they get uh, prizes uh, like, like well, even last week we had a, a professor who, who got recognized for with a Life uh, Achievement Award, uh, international. Uh, and, and, and so that is, that is of course, a very, very nice. Uh, and that shows that, that people are really well known in their fields, experts in their field. Mm -hmm. And... and, and also, yeah. Uh, so so yeah. I mean, I can also add. I mean, if we if we're talking about uh, people teaching, it's it's not only uh, our own staff. It's not only IT Delft staff, but but we have a lot of um, guest lecturers as well, and and they come from the industry. They come from field with field experience, and and they bring yet another ex, uh, aspect of, uh, of of that particular uh, discipline or this the particular topic in. So, so we draw also a lot on, uh, on guest lectures and, and some of them are also quite well known in their field. Yeah, indeed. And um, uh, I think when you come to IHE Delft, of course you're then living in and around Delft. Uh, could you uh, share with us kind of how that enriches the experience as well? Mm -hmm. It's a very nice town. It's a uh, it's an old uh, it's a relatively small uh, town with a with a historic center. So that's really it's a touristy town. So, uh, but it's also a student town. So you see a lot of uh, uh, students around. Uh, of course, we have the TU Delft here and and are some other colleges. So it's it's there's a lot of facilities also for students. Uh, it's lively. There's a there's a lot of uh, restaurants, bars, and uh, and cafes. So it's 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 a it's a nice lively town and. Fortunately, now we are opening up again after Corona. Okay. Uh, so, so that really brings uh, a, a different atmosphere in. And, uh, and, and plus, I mean, I, I should say that it's also very uh, centrally located in the Netherlands and we have good train. So uh, in two hours, you're in Brussels. In three hours, you're in uh, Paris. And, uh, and, and also to England, there's the, to Britain, the, there are trains. And the, so it's, it's also easy to, to go around. It's centrally lo located. It's safe. It's a lovely town. Yeah. And a great way to explore Europe further, indeed. Um, I think I've asked all the questions I want to ask, but do you have some, maybe some last words for those people who are thinking about studying with us? Well, if you are passionate about water, if you want to contribute to uh, water and development, sustainable development, and if you really enjoy meeting new people, uh, international people from all over, international, and you enjoy the ent ent international environment, then I think IG is the, is the place for you. And of course, be prepared to work hard. <laughs> well, yes, yes, indeed. that also. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, a lot of fun. Okay, Charlotte, thank you very much for uh, taking the time to open this meeting with me, and uh, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. So um, for the rest of the time that we have, we have an hour approximately. Uh, just now, I will uh, show a video by. Professor Graham Jewett, he's a, our professor of hydrology, and he walks us through some of the aspects of this uh, new master program, the one-year master. After that is done, I will be introducing our panel, um, who's, who consists of two people, Ineke Meles, she's our senior fellowship uh, and admission officer, so she deals with uh, getting you admitted into the program, and uh, also Laszlo Heide, He's a senior lecturer in irrigation engineering, but more importantly for this webinar, he's also 
the program manager of the MSc program in water and sustainable development, the program that we are discussing today. So without further ado, I will switch on the video. Is our most important resource. From its role as a life sustaining liquid to its cultural and spiritual values, water has and always will be intricately enmeshed with humans and the society's environment in which we live. Over the past 60 plus years, IHE Delft Institute for Water Education has provided education and training programs on different aspects of water. Since our inception as a technical institute de dealing almost exclusively with floods, through to the inclusion of integrated water resources management and aspects of management and governance in our programs, and now in the time of sustainable development goals and the imperatives of addressing issues associated with climate change, IHE Delft remains a leading institution globally when it comes to delivering relevant and topical education programs. Our extensive alumni network across the world bears testament to this. Water is a big deal on the global agenda, and I'm sure in your country too. So the interest in studying water and its role in sustainable development is really at an all-time high. And of course associated with this is that people from different backgrounds and with different interests become interested in water and have different entry points in which they would like to study water. So as society evolves, so do we at IHE. And that provides the impetus for a brand new master's program, the Master of Science in Water and Sustainable Development. My name is Graham Jewett. I'm Professor of Hydrology and Vice Chair of the Committee which has been developing our new Master of Science. In this short video, I'd like to explain some of the key elements which form the new degree structure at IHE Delft and the options that you have to join us. The program is focused on managers and practitioners and aims to provide skills to support you in the job that you will do when you return home. Very importantly, this will take only one year to complete. It is still a fully fledged MSc accredited by the Dutch MVO. That's the organization responsible for accreditation of education programs here in the Netherlands. Of course, being a one year program also means that hard work is expected from the students. But as our program evolves, so do our education approaches. And we believe that we have created a truly innovative education program that will be achievable in 12 months. That program kicks off in 2022 and we are welcoming applications now. At IHE, we fully recognize that the nature of water-related problems and development options needs an interdisciplinary approach. So while we retain our disciplinary strength in the new program, we also provide training for the more general scientists and many opportunities for interdisciplinary collaboration, such as specific weeks in which students from all disciplines interact, and fieldwork and group projects. In fact, this philosophy of interdisciplinarity underpins the program. We have really looked at the structure and content of the new degree and thought carefully about the skills and topics that are going to support water and sustainable development in the future. So you will see that core components like hydrology, hydraulics, environmental sciences, wastewater treatment, sanitation, governance and management, and others are there, but have had a refresh to gear them towards the future. This translates into four clear tracks which address these major water challenges. Water, food and energy, water hazards, risks and climate, water and health, and water resources and ecosystem health. Now let's now look at the specifics of the program. It has been designed to give you some choice about the topics you study. So when you apply, you begin by choosing one of four tracks and a profile in that track. 
These profiles are engineering and hydrology, management and governance, environment, sanitation, and digital innovation, something we see as a big topic for the future. So here are two examples. You have a background in civil engineering and you wish to explore the linkages between drainage and sewerage and treatment processes and technologies and their planning and management, including the financing of water treatment plants. So this profile designed in the water and health track will prepare you for this. Or you have a background in environmental sciences and agriculture and you are interested in developing sustainable water resources management solutions with a focus on ecosystems which produce food for people. So think about rice from wetlands or aquaculture in a lake. You could then follow an environmental profile within the water resources and ecosystem health or the water food and energy tracks. So these are only two examples and since everyone has different requirements and different interests, we also recognize that the nature of water and the people who engage with water don't always follow strict profiles. So there's also an opportunity for you to build your own profile. Now this is something which is done in discussion with your coach, which is another innovation in the new MSc program. Coaches are there to support and guide you as you move through the program. They make sure that you're comfortable with the choices of your modules, or they suggest sensible alternatives. Then, of course, it wouldn't be a master of science without a research component. Now, most likely, you will start thinking about your research thesis after about three months into the program, maybe for some a bit before that. Once again, your coach will assist you to make the best choice of topic for your career goals. You may want to co-design a topic with your employer, or you could choose a subject which addresses a specific need of your country. Or perhaps you want to focus on an issue with a view to working in the development field in the future. IG Delft is quite a small institute, but we have a very large reputation. At IG, you will get to know students and staff from all over the world, and you will hear about the water challenges and experiences that they bring. This also means that you will get to know people from many other disciplines and learn from them and their experiences. Our alumni tell us that the highlights of their time at IG are the field trips, both in and outside of the Netherlands, life in Delft, which is a very safe and friendly city, the different cultural evenings and festive events organized by staff and students, and making friends for life from all over the world. The alumni of IHG make up one of the largest water networks in the world. There are now more than 23,000 former students, most of them still working in water or related fields. So, we invite you to join the MSc program graduate from the MSc program and join that extensive network of our alumni. And Laura, of course, my yeah. yes, I am here. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was talking, but I'll start over again. So I've now brought our panel on screen, Laszlo Heide and Ineke Meles. So welcome to this panel. They'll be able to answer your questions, many of them. Um, maybe, Ineke, we can start with you. Can you maybe walk us through the registration process? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Laura. Yes, the, the students have to uh, start looking at the website and see what the program is about. So, and, and prepare their application very well. So what's the background, uh, what work are you doing and what are your future plans and what is the program with the different tracks and profiles. So think really what you want. 
and then you go to the place at the website where you find the information about the admission requirements and the application and also go through that very well and prepare your documents in advance. And then you see there a button and that's apply now. And when you click there, you can create a user account. And then you first will be requested to fill in your personal data, prior education and work experience. And then you select the study program. And in the application form, there are five motivation questions which you have to answer. And you have to indicate your uh, preferred track and profile. And then you have to upload all your documents and submit your application. And then upon receipt, we will see if you can be admitted and you will be informed within uh, four weeks. Okay, um, thanks very much. And I know there are currently a lot of scholarship, scholarship opportunities open. Uh, could you maybe tell us a little bit about that, Ineke? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, there are many um, opportunities for scholarship at the moment, which are open. So um, the Orange Knowledge Program, OKP, and the deadline is the 15th of March. There uh, you should uh, be from an eligible country. So you can find that uh, on the website if your country is eligible for OKP. And then for OKP, there are also other requirements. So you have to read carefully if you meet those requirements. Like you, one important one is that you need to be employed and that your employer has to confirm uh, paying your sal salary while you're studying. And uh, yeah, then you have to prepare your uh, your uh, application carefully. And then you, uh, yeah, we strongly advise you to apply for it because there's quite a, if you have a good application, uh, there's quite a good chance for being awarded uh, the scholarship. Then we also have uh, Rotary scholarships. Uh, deadline is 15th of April. And the Rotary scholarships are only available for the tracks water and health and water resources and ecosystem health. And then we have also from uh, students from Sahel, uh, MENA and SITS countries, they can apply and the, the deadline is the 1st of May. And we have the Joint Japan World Bank Scholarship Program, which uh, hasn't opened yet. That will open at the end of March and the deadline is the 27th of May. And uh, that's, uh, you may already read uh, about it on the website and see what are the requirements so that you can also prepare yourself uh, well for it. And then there are many uh, more other scholarships opportunities. You can find it uh, on the website and you can also pay uh, the course yourself or your employer. And you're also advised to search yourself for other opportunities which are not mentioned on the website, which may be specifically there for your country. And, and even if you can't find anything, we, we advise you to submit an application for admission because sometimes through the year there come new scholarships and then we look into the list of applicants who have been admitted. So that, that may also happen. So if you are interested in the program and meet the admission criteria, we, uh, we uh, strongly advise you to apply for admission. Okay, and we have a question uh, coming in also about uh, scholarship. Can someone from the Dutch side of St. Martin uh, with the Dutch passport, can she uh, come in for duo financing? as a Dutch citizen? Um, that's best that you inquire with, with Duo. I think then that is that is possible, but uh, yeah, Duo is also a loan, of course, and the, the fees, we, we use uh, the regular fees, which are quite high compared to the tuition fee at uh, the Dutch universities for Dutch students. But uh, I advise you to check that uh, with Duo and see what are the requirements. Okay, thanks. So, Brianna, please check that yourself. Um, Laszlo, turning to you, uh, could you maybe talk a little bit about what happens before you come to IHE Delft? I heard in the video, I heard coaches mentioned, I heard prep courses. Could you maybe explain a little bit? Yes, thank you, Laura, for this very interesting question. And it's important, as it was also mentioned by Professor Graham Jewitt, that the coaching is indeed a key feature of our uh, new program. Can you please uh, show my slide, uh, which is explaining a little bit that thing? Yeah, exactly. So that's, uh, that is also mentioning that uh, when you start your studying or 
even before, uh, actually when there are financially admitted students, so that means that also the financial conditions of the, the fee coverage is already solved, then uh, each students are uh, getting in contact with the coaches. The coaches are helping and uh, supporting the students to setting their own learning goals. And uh, as you can see on this slide, also there is a portfolio uh, also to be developed by the students. Uh, and that is reflecting also how the, the goals and uh, the career ambitions uh, are uh, analyzed by the students themselves. Uh, and also uh, assesses the progress and building of the portfolio and so on together with uh, the students. But uh, also there is an important thing that if it comes out during those discussions, even before you arrive to IHE, that uh, we are developing uh, preparatory courses. You can see a list here, uh, nine preparatory courses actually, actually uh, on uh, different uh, topics. Uh, and if there is some uh, need uh, for your studies if in the field what you have selected, uh, you would like to uh, check or develop your basic knowledge for that particular direction, then these preparatory courses can help in that. Okay, good to hear. Um, and also, I heard in the video that there are modules and also mixed weeks. Um, could you maybe show uh, and tell a little bit about those? Yes, exactly. Also on this uh, slide, you see that uh, how the the, uh, the the program is built up actually. So the the elements of the program, uh, there are the track modules, uh, and also in between the tech, tech track modules, you can also see the mixed weeks. Uh, mixed weeks have basically uh, three objectives or three different parts. Uh, one is that after two modules, the first few days of the week. Uh, are spent for the examinations of those modules before. Uh, mm -hmm. Then the second uh, part is to develop a certain kind of trans interdisciplinary uh, uh, skills, uh, basically. So uh, I would say that uh, transdisciplinary skills uh, to be developed and so on, uh, which are practiced the modules afterwards. So the theoretical basis, uh, let, let me just tell you a couple of examples, uh, critical reading, uh, presentation skills, uh, reading the literature in a critical way, uh, scientific writing, these kind of things uh, are the skills that we are also thinking about as uh, really needs for master students. Uh, and those are developed during those weeks, theoretically, and then practiced in the coming uh, modules afterwards. And the third element of those mixed weeks is basically uh, having contact with the coaches and working on the portfolio development, as mentioned before. Okay, thank you. That's a very clear answer. Um, looking at the questions coming in, um, there is something about, uh, oh yeah, there's this question. Maybe I will take this away and show the question on screen. So, Inika, I think this is for you. Is it possible to apply for this MSc while waiting for graduation at an undergraduate level? Yes, that is possible. If you, but you should then uh, uh, be about to graduate this year. So you you need to be graduated uh, before. Uh, August and and we need a proof uh, then that you will be graduating, but that is possible. Most of the applicants uh, have graduated and are mid-career professionals, uh, but there are also some young graduates. We have that every year, and uh, yeah, that's possible. Okay, thanks. Um, another question uh, is about age limits. Are there any age limits for our uh, for our program? No, there are no uh, age limits uh, for applying and being academically admitted, but uh, scholarships pr uh, providers, they may uh, often have an age limit. So that's uh, that's what you have to check then. But if yes, you uh, will, will be paying yourself or your employer, then uh, then it's possible. And I'm going to show the rest of the question on screen and maybe that's something for Laszlo uh, to talk about uh, because the background is in laboratory science. Uh, water quality control and public health, um, and if they if they are eligible for these courses or for this master program. 
Well, I, I would say that we, we have one track, which is water and health, uh, also having uh, sanitation uh, as, as a profile in that one. So it seems to me that uh, if you have a, a Bachelor of Science uh, uh, level uh, diploma already, then I think it might be possible for you. But of course, uh, this, this has to be worked out in the application material so that well there, there are several things asked uh, so i i would say it's it's difficult to give a direct answer that yes you can be uh, eligible yes of course i would say but uh well depending on uh, the the background the study uh, background and also the professional background if there is any practical experience and as you mentioned there is so that that can be an option so i would say it's better to uh, to fill the application uh, materials and then we'll see. Okay, thanks. Um, and that brings me to another point for you, maybe, Laszlo, about the tracks and profiles. What are they? Yeah, okay. Then uh, let's go back a little bit to our slides. And these are the tracks. So we have the thematic tracks and the disciplinary profiles. So the four thematic tracks, those are water, food, and energy, water hazards, risk, and climate water and health and water resources and ecosystem health and when we are talking about profiles it, within all those tracks there are different profiles uh, which are coming up and those are engineering and hydrology governance and management environment sanitation and digital innovation Actually, these are disciplinary profiles. Now, that does not mean that even if you are choosing a track and the profile, which we also require for, uh, through the application process to name one track and one profile, it does not necessarily mean that you have to stick to that one, what you have chosen uh, at the beginning, stick to that one all along your studies. So also, uh, well, uh, based on the discussions with your coaches, and also working out uh, your portfolio and your personal goals, career ambitions during the discussions with the coaches, there are different ways that you can follow one track and maybe one profile or even a different profile modules all along the one track studies. But I can also show another example here. So for instance, choosing modules from one track and maybe two different profiles and choosing the rest of the modules from another track. Uh, depending on the interest, depending on the career ambitions, as it was already mentioned. So this gives uh, quite a great variety and flexibility in uh, building up uh, the, the learning trajectory, what is designed for one particular student. Okay, that's, that's quite clear. And a follow-up question that was asked is, um, and I will remove this so we can see you again um are there limited slots for each track and is it possible to change your apply track upon discussion with your coach i think you mentioned it briefly but just to be safe and uh, yeah yeah it, exactly so that's the issue that while it it has to be discussed uh, with the coaches uh, not uh, not only within the track or inside the track, but also possibly uh, to to choose uh, some topics some modules from another track as well so there, there is quite uh, really a large uh, flexibility uh, opportunity in the program. Okay, thanks. That's really, really clear. Um, and I think some people are aware that we are also having a two-year master program. Oh, this is not the one I wanted to show. A two-year master program under development because a question is, is it possible to change the one-year master to a two-year two master? Well, uh, it's a difficult question. Uh, and the reason why is it difficult that, well, you might have recognized on our website, uh, Ali Reza, that uh, we are not starting the two year master program now. So I would say, uh, well, th there are still discussions going on uh, on this and the, the conditions have to be worked out. Uh, so there are quite some restrictions, uh, but theoretically it is possible. Uh, however, the one-year master program is starting right now, uh, in this year, I mean, in October, but mm -hmm. the two-year master program is not starting this year. We are still uh, developing that one and starting it in 2023. So, 
if you really would like to move from the one-year program to the two-year program, then you will have a time gap, so some kind of a time difference uh, here. So that, that's why it is very difficult to answer this question. Theoretically, it is possible. Uh, practically, this time, it is rather difficult. Yes, okay, that's also very clear. And then uh, a very important question, <laughs> but I think we've covered it. Is it really one year for an MSc program? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's the short answer. Uh, the longer yeah. one was uh, partly included in the presentation of uh, Professor Graham Jewitt also, uh, that this will be a very intensive program. So uh, my, maybe I can tell you that, well, I, I usually uh, tell it to the students coming in and the first days that here in IHE we try to keep you busy. Uh, and that is specifically valid. So that's uh, well, especially valid for this one-year program that we, we really have to uh, keep you busy. Uh, there, there are no breaks, no summer break. Uh, the program goes continuously all along the year from the beginning to the end, including the research part, uh, everything. So that means you have to be very highly motivated to join IHE for sure. Yes. Um, I here have a question for Ineke. Um, is it allowed to apply in case someone doesn't have an IBT or IELTS, but is fluent in English? Uh, applying uh, for admission is always uh, possible without the English test. So everybody can, can already apply uh, when they do not have the English test. And if uh, applicants meet all the admission requires, they may receive a conditional admission letter, but it is required to get the final admission. So it's important uh, if you are going to apply for a scholarship, then before the scholarship deadline, you need to have uh, this unconditional admission. So therefore, it's important to register to do the English test if your country is required uh, to submit an English test with the application. And uh, I just showed another question that you have answered. Is it... Uh possible to present the English language certificate later? And you said yes. Um, and uh, this is another question about the English proficiency. Is it possible yes, to but apply? it's not after the financial admission. Eh? It's, it's part of the, the academic admission process. So yes. if someone applies, then it's a conditional admission. Yes. So you have to have it done before you are actually uh, yeah. allowed to join. And this question here, um, is it possible to apply by using English proficiency from university? Now there's uh, the English requirements are on, on the website. There is a list with countries uh, which are exempted. And if your country is not on that list, you are required to do the English language test. So even if uh, your university uh, writes a statement, because uh, we have, uh, this is the experience that it's required for those countries even if they may have followed uh, the bachelor in English. Okay. Um, and uh, I think some more questions about applying. If my transcript is not on the US or British scale, do you have any official means of con conversion or validation that I can use? There's always on the transcript, there, there is usually an explanation of the mark. So you have to, uh, when you apply, you have to um, upload the transcript with also the, the translation of the marks. And we have uh, a list of all countries and we can see what is then the, the minimum uh, required GPA for admission. Okay, um, this one may be for Laszlo, an interesting question. Will there be lots of group work, uh, projects, presentations? Definitely, yes. Uh, so I, I also mentioned the, those uh, skills, which we are also developing. Those are including presentation skills. Group work is among them. Uh, there is also a, a special module. So also in the different modules, in the different topics, there are also some things, some assignments, what you have to solve in groups. But also, uh, there are some uh, specific projects, what is uh, designed for group work. Uh, actually, it will be an interdisciplinary project. So then also the groups are formulated in an interdisciplinary way. So that, yes, there will be a lot of group and uh, presentations are also required by the students and so on. 
Okay, thank you. Um, and there are quite a few questions about how people's backgrounds match up with, uh, with what we offer. Um, so, for example, this one. Does someone with a Master of Engineering in Civil Engineering working in the transport sector stand a chance of being selected? Well, uh, theoretically, yes. Uh, civil engineering is, uh, is an important uh, background study for our uh, programs. Well, the transport sector is just your working experience. But as it was mentioned by Ineke before, that uh, even without a work experience, somebody can apply. So if you were very good in your studies in civil engineering, uh, especially in uh, the water related subjects uh, in your studies, then uh, there is a chance uh, and well of course you have to write a, a nice motivation letter why would you like to change from the field of transportation uh, transport uh, design and so on development uh, towards uh, water related uh, topics but yes it is possible okay um thank you and um i see a quite an interesting question that we haven't had before the years after graduation, what kind of job opportunities and visa admissions are available to foreigners? I think this is from someone who wants to work in the Netherlands. So who would be able to answer this one? Well, well I know I that can... uh, for okay. the visa, <laughs> well, let's yeah. just for the, for the visa, I can mention that it, if you have um, graduated at, uh, in the Netherlands with a master degree, then you can apply for a third year visa. So you, this is a special visa. And then you have the opportunity to stay for one year in the Netherlands to search for a job. So this is what I know, uh, but Laszlo can, uh, can tell more about the type of jobs uh, available in this field. Yeah, first of all, I don't know where you are from, I mean, but uh, the, the, the thing is that uh, most of our students uh, are coming from uh, least developed or developing countries. And the main objective of IHE is also uh, to train uh, those uh, students to go back to their country and, and uh, work for their country and develop the knowledge uh, of others in their country. Uh, so that is the main objective of uh, our work at IHE. Uh, so basically, uh, well, that's that's why it is an interesting question that looking for job opportunities in the Netherlands, that was answered by Ineke, that well, the visa issues and so on. But on the other hand, uh, if you are interested at what are the job opportunities after uh, finishing IHE, then I would say that uh, we have quite a big alumni network uh, and we are following also the uh, well the, the the careers of the alumni, and uh, what we can recognize is that most of the uh, people when they are returning with their uh, diploma from IHE, they have uh, quite good jobs and also some promotion even in their present jobs or before jobs, and that is going quite quickly. Well, then I can also add such kind of uh, interesting details that it happened uh, in the past that uh, we had uh, four ministers in the field of water mm -hmm. all around the world at the same time who were uh, uh, IHE alumni. So that, that is also uh, giving you a, an idea that, well, maybe if you would like to graduate from IHE, then you can also become a minister. Not everybody that graduates from IHE becomes a minister, but <laughs> but there is the opportunity there. Yes, um, so I think you've also answered the question that I've just shown um, and about navigating and uh, discovering areas of work and impact after the program. Indeed, by using our alumni community uh, as a big uh, factor. Yeah, and actually we also have uh, several discussions and the portfolio development is also related to that one. So lifelong learning uh, is basically an important issue for uh, our study programs as well. So then we try to include uh, well, also the skill development and also additional things what we are discussing and also the uh, the wideness, the broadness of uh, the different fields uh, which are included in the program also uh, serving that. Okay, a um, uh, nice question here. Uh, Laszlo mentions that selected students will be matched with a coach. When does this usually start and how long will it take? 
uh, well, uh, when somebody is financially admitted, uh, then uh, the the coaches are informed that uh, there is a student in certain field that uh, who is financially admitted already. Uh, and then uh, within a couple of weeks, I would say, the coach will take contact uh, online uh, with the, the student and start to discuss uh, the objectives, the learning objectives, the selected track, selected profile, whether that one is really matching the best uh, with the goals of the student. Uh, and if there are, uh, well, additional studies needed, uh, or the preparatory course is needed, then that will be also discussed. So I would say that as soon as somebody is financially admitted, these discussions are starting. Uh, and obviously, uh, they will keep contact with the coach uh, even all along with the studies. Yeah, okay, clear. Um, I have a question with the last word in another statement because it was misspelled. I'm currently working in the wastewater industry. How could this program be beneficial to my current job and how much will it cost? It's supposed to say cost. Um, so maybe the first part, the wastewater industry, Laszlo, you could uh, talk about that. Yeah, well, of course, there is a disciplinary profile which is existing in several tracks. And that's actually the, well, mm, let me check. No, not in all, well, not in different tracks, but actually in one track, the water, food and energy. Uh, no, sorry, the water and health. Yeah, the water and health uh, track has a sanitation profile. Uh, in that profile, I see the, uh, the, uh, really opportunities for you, uh, that it seems to me that uh, it can be beneficial. If you look at those modules, and well, I, I have to mention that on our website, uh, several details of the different tracks and profiles are already available. So you can read a lot uh, even about the module content uh, of several modules. So I suggest you to study those. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can be really beneficial for your job. And how much that costs, maybe Inaka can uh, talk yes. about that a bit. Yeah, yeah the cost for a one year uh, program, so the fees and then it's including insurance and, and cost for the residence permit, that's around uh, 20,000 euro. And then besides, you have the cost of, of living for the 12 months. Uh, so that's around uh, 10,000 euros for a year. Okay. And then, of course, the flight tickets and, and some some other transportation cost. But you um, find all the cost on the website also that you can look uh, more in detail. And following up about costs, uh, do you have to pay all the fee before being financially admitted or are there a possibility for installments? So the tuition fee needs to be paid uh, before the program starts. There's a certain uh, deadline that it needs to be paid. And, and after that has been paid or you have a confirmed scholarship, then we start making all the uh, arrangements for the visa and uh, arranging your coming to the Netherlands. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's quite a lot of questions still here and we're running out of time. So I'm going to pick the most important ones. Um, is it possible to apply for a PhD after this program is over. Uh, maybe Laszlo, you can explain that. Yeah, well, uh, applying PhD where? That's the question from my side then. Uh, yes, there are uh, different uh, places, institutions, universities all around the world where you can apply for PhD. Uh, definitely, you have to check the conditions and the requirements of those uh, places where you are applying for that. Uh, but here I would like to mention that while uh, also uh, it was also touched before that we shall have a two year program. Uh, and that is the one which is more towards uh, the research direction. So those who would like to uh, go further uh, for uh, academic career or research direction uh, and applying for a PhD later, they will have the opportunity also to uh, go for the two-year program, which is called Research Master. Uh, the title will be the same, so Research Master in Water and Sustainable Development. 
uh, that will be the two-year program. That is more aiming for going for uh, a PhD, uh, but depending on the requirements, depending on the place where you would like to apply, it is possible. Okay. Um, moving on, I see a question. Are there any restrictions to apply for a scholarship if I'm working in a humanitarian organization? I think, Inika, this one is for you. Uh, yeah, it depends on on the on the on the sponsor you're looking for. I know for the Orange Knowledge Program, then um, uh, students working for an uh, international NGO are not eligible. But for other sponsors, I don't know. Uh, each sponsor has its own requirements, so it's important to check with all the the sponsor what are the requirements to find out if you are uh, eligible. Okay, and then another question, I think also for you, Ineke, is there a way to get in touch with the alumni community? But also Laszlo can answer if you know. Or maybe I can answer because yeah. I work at the communication office and uh, yay, I can answer a question. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. But uh, we have an alumni officer at the communication office and she manages a lot of uh, country alumni groups. So if you're from a certain country and you want to discuss what life is like at IHE and how difficult things are or what kind of uh, future prospects there are, then um, do reach out to her. Her name is Maria Laura Sorrentino. Uh, you can find her on our website and she will be able to connect you with the correct alumni community for you. But it's, so, it's interesting, Laura, I have recognized that one of my present students uh, at mm -hmm. IHE is also present in our uh, webinar now. And I have seen already an answer given by him or a, a suggestion given by him, recognizing that there is a country fellow uh, also being in the uh, in the chat. So that was also quite a nice example that also present students can be reached uh, directly so that's uh, maybe even a better and more direct getting information okay yes nice nice addition to that um there is a question that has less to do with this master program that we're discussing but are there any available phd programs at IHE delft yes of course uh well we also have master programs uh, we also have phd programs no undergraduate level programs, but we have several online and short courses as well. Uh, so th this is the portfolio of IHE Delft, uh, if you like. So the, yes, there are uh, PhD programs uh, and the application uh, opportunities and the application process is also described on the website. And post PhD program, I don't think we have that, but we do have uh, post PhD opportunities, I think, sometimes. Postdoc programs, program we don't have, but uh, different uh, research projects and, uh, well, other activities going on, which might have the opportunity to advertise postdoc positions. But that is basically position-based and uh, specific requirements uh, working in that direction of the project. Okay, thank you very much. Um, let me see. Um, there's a question about the coaches, whether the coach stays with you throughout the whole program. Yes, the idea is so, yes. Okay, very straightforward answer. Um, and uh, I think this one is for Inika. I can get my IELTS degree th in three months later. Can this person give it in June 2022? I think it's already been slightly yeah, discussed. I think yeah. I already, we already discussed it. Um, you can apply for admission without the uh, English test if you don't have it available right now. But then you will get a conditional admission. And uh, for scholarship, it's required to have an unconditional admission. So you have to look at the scholarship deadline if you have a certain scholarship in mind. If you uh, intend to pay the, the fees by your yourself, then the deadline for submitting the English test results is the same as the financial confirmation deadline. So the same deadline, you have to prove that you uh, will pay the course fees. 
Okay, um, this question that I have now is related, I think, also to something we already discussed. Is it possible to join the research master after this program, or does a person have to start from scratch? I think you did already cover it, Laszlo, but maybe just shortly making sure that everybody understands. Yeah, uh, well, there, there was a similar question indeed about this. Uh, the only problem is that the research master is not starting this year. Uh, so actually, the uh, the one year uh, master program is starting in October 2022, uh, and we start the two year research master in 2023. Now, if somebody has finished uh, the uh, one year program uh, and uh, is going to apply for the research master afterwards, uh, actually, I cannot really answer that question uh, at the moment now because the, the research master requirements are still uh, under development now. Uh, but most probably, I would say that, well, several things can be accepted uh, in, in well, or exempted uh, some modules and some things. So it's, it's difficult to answer it now, but uh, theoretically, I see the possibility for that. And I'm guessing that the answer will become clearer once the research master actually starts. Yes, yes, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it might be worth your while to wait for the research master to start before you go for the one year master. Um, I think we have time for two more questions. Is there some sort of support network which could help graduated students from the program to articulate from their countries in order to help tackle similar water related problems? This is, um, I'm going to interpret this question as, uh, is it possible to connect with other uh, alumni at, once you've graduated to discuss uh, similar water related problems? Or yeah, I think this again uh, goes back to the alumni uh, community. Yes. I, I, it seems to me as well. So I'm, I'm also having some difficulty to understand that, but it looks like the, to get in touch with graduated students, I would say that this is going towards the alumni community. Uh, and well, of course, as it was discussed, that uh, we try to keep contact with our students. Uh, even there is uh, Maria Laura who is uh, de dealing with that. So there is an opportunity and you can get in contact with uh, the alumni network through IHE. Uh, so that is possible, as Laura explained before. And I think to mention two other things, we also have uh, sort of, uh, we're working together with Josh's Water Jobs, who publishes a lot of water-related jobs around the world. So there is that connection. And also we, ha we have quite a, a close connection with the Water Youth Network that we've worked with. And many of the people in there are our alumni as well. So um, there are opportunities once you come to IHE to keep connected even after graduation. Actually, that's one of our strong points compared to other universities. Um, I am going to show one more question. My background is in soil and water resource management. Can you apply on MSc on hydrology? So Laszlo, this one I think is for you. Soil and water resource management, uh, well, of course, uh, yeah, I would be really interested to see your transcript, uh, what topics and what subjects were included in uh, your studies before. But uh, at the moment, I would say yes. So uh, soil and water resource, well, water resources management is definitely in strong link with uh, hydrology. Uh, and also we have one of the tracks is water resources and ecosystem health. But also in the other tracks, there are several hydrology related uh, uh, directions or disciplinary profiles. Uh, so I see the opportunity and while well, looking at soil, it goes to agricultural water use and so on. So then towards irrigation, that is also possible. So yes, there are different directions I think you can go for. Okay. And then maybe to end up with, because we are almost out of time, I'm going to show this one, which is maybe not so much a question, but it's a nice positive note to end on. Uh, great to attend this presentation. I'm more inspired to apply for the program. I'm from 
Querétaro, Mexico, in the middle of an exacerbated water crisis caused by irregular urban growth in a drylands ecosystem. Thank you a lot. Hopefully see you in the Institute. So I hope that all of our viewers are equally uh, inspired to apply and we look forward to receiving all of your applications. Um, Ineke and Laszlo, thank you very much for attending this. Thank you. And uh, have a nice evening. <laughs> Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. 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 And um, all the rest of you watching from around the world, it was great to have you here. Uh, we look forward to receiving your applications. And if you have any further questions, please do reach out uh, to us uh, either by sending us an email or through our social media channels. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at IHE. Goodbye, everybody.